welcome to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. My name is Erica, I'm from the Steel City Stitchers, and I'm here today as a guest tutor to show you how you can put your, turn your finished stitched pieces into pillows for your home. Before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button below and click subscribe to see regular helpful cross stitch related content from this channel. Let's get started. As you know, of course, pillows come in all shapes, sizes, just, you can make a pillow as unique as yourself, I'm sure. Right? That seems possible. I have made two different types of pillows for the purposes of this video to show you. The first is very small. You can take an element from a cross stitch pattern, and in this case I've taken uh, one of the butterflies from Sally's pattern Fly Away, which is a free pattern available if you sign up for her newsletter. So be sure to do that. You will get, I believe, five free patterns for signing up for the newsletter. And who doesn't love free patterns? I certainly do. So I took one of these tiny butterflies. I stitched it with um, just any random DMC that I had just because I wanted to like try it out on some hand dyed Ada. Maybe it's better over here. And I finished it as a little ornament. You'll see that there's this green ribbon here and on the back some just plain green fabric that I had in my stash. I stuffed this with polyfill and then I did a terrible ladder stitch to close it up. I have done better ladder stitches in my day. This is not the best one. <laughs> but that's fine because I'm the only one that's going to see it. So you can turn your stitch pieces. You could take an element from any of Sally's pieces, any cross stitch pattern you can think of, and turn it into a tiny ornament, which would be great for gift giving or for decorating in your home. So, small, tiny, teeny tiny pillow. This counts as a pillow. You can do this. I used my sewing machine and I cut these fabrics, cut them together so they would be the same size, faced them together, did a simple straight stitch around, leaving a small opening to turn the piece and to stuff it with polyfill. And then again, I used a ladder stitch to close it up. You'll want to stitch the ribbon in there too, um, having that all inside. Now, this was very simple and it's very small, so it seems very manageable. Yes? Yes. You can also make larger pillows, pillows that you could put on your couch, on your bed, something like that, to use your hard work to decorate your house. So, I took some of the pieces that my friend Erin has stitched over I think probably last, it was last year that she stitched these pieces, and I made them into pillows for her. I'm going to show you them now, and don't be overwhelmed. They are definitely just as easy as it was to make that pillow as to make something like this. This here is the Deck the Halls pattern. It was a stitch along that came out recently, I believe the end of 2019 or through the latter half of, the 20, of 2019. Erin finished this on a piece of pink 14 count Ada that she had in her stash. She stitched it with the called for colors in, of her threads. And I finished it as this throw pillow. It's about 12 by 16 inches because that's the, um, that's the size pillow form that I was able to get and that fit best with this project. I, on the back, finished it with some, um, this fabric is designed by Lori Holt. It's called Cozy Christmas Sparkle in White, and as you can see, I inserted a zipper. It is not that hard to insert a zipper, especially for this project. This isn't a handbag, this isn't a cosmetic bag, anything like this. This is easy. You can definitely do this. So, I designed this, I didn't design this, you know, and the pillow form just slips right in. You can zip it up, and then if, you know, Hopefully nothing spills on this. Hopefully nothing happens to your stitches. But if something did, you could take it off and you could wash it off. Great. So I'm going to walk you through how to make one of these. This next one that I have made that I will be showing you the steps is the Adventure... Adventure... Ad 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 excuse me. <laughs> I can't speak. It's the Adventure Awaits pattern designed by Sally, which I believe was also... A stitch along. Erin stitched this piece on some white Ada 14 count um, 
using the called for colors. I actually believe that she got this as a kit. So this was the kit that Sally, you know, curated, put together, and mailed to her. So the fabric is from Sally, the threads are from Sally. It turned out beautifully. So the key here is when you're making a pillow, you generally want to measure your fabric to be, to be a little bit larger than the pillow form. So once you've sewn it, it will be about the same size. To get an accurate measurement and cut, you'll want to have a cutting mat, a self-healing cutting mat, some kind of ruler to help you cut straight line. Uh, I like to use a rotary cutter for most of these types of projects. You could use scissors, of course. I feel like I don't get as accurate a cut when I use scissors for this sort of measurement um, as I do with the rotary cutter. You want to have something that you can mark it with. I like to use a friction pen. You'll also want to have your tape measure so you can be accurate. I like to use little clips to clip the um, the fabric together in order to make you know stitching around be pretty easy. And then you know of course you'll need your sewing machine, needle, thread, that sort of thing. So to get started, the type, the size um, pillow form that I used for actually both the deck the halls and adventure weights was 12 by 16. So when I was cutting these, I looked at the pattern, I measured it out, okay yes, 12 by 16 will fit. So I cut, and for the adventure weights, the um, it was a little bit tighter on the sides, there wasn't as much um, extra Ada on the sides there, so I made it be 12 by, I cut it 12 by 17 and a half. 12 by 17 for the for the front of it and then the back fabric that I used was 12 by 17 and a half and then I cut it just anywhere I felt like to install that zipper on the extra piece like the backing fabric I'm getting ahead of myself so first of all you're gonna to want to cut your Ada with the deck the halls pattern I cut 13 by 17 done then you want to cut your backing fabric It'll be 13 and in this case, and then a little bit longer to account for the zipper seam allowance. So 13 by 17 and a half. Because you'll do about a quarter inch seam allowance, a little, maybe a little bit less to install the zipper. So next, next plan, cut that piece in half, the backing piece. You want to cut it in half, not even in half. I on this deck the halls one, it is about a third of the way I would say down. I just kind of eyeballed it. It does not matter where the zipper ends up because you will just have a zipper and I think it's nicer to have it up here so that when you slip the pillow form in it's most of the way inside before you're zipping it back up again. So 17 and a half and then you will install your zipper and it's really very easy. You'll want to lay the zipper face down on one of those pieces of fabric. Then clip, clip, clip. I like to clip a whole lot so the zipper doesn't move so much. And then you will um, just sew a straight stitch with your sewing machine. If you have a zipper foot, it's useful here. Um, it is not, you could get away without using a zipper foot in this case, but you probably should just so you don't bump your zipper too much. Once you have that, you can um, move on to the next side and you will flip the piece up that you had just done and then put the other piece down that you um, the other side of the, the backing fabric and you will do the same exact thing clip the fabric to the zipper stitch there you are next in your process you will want to iron top stitch the zipper boom okay you're ready to put the pillow together you will um, put the fabrics facing each other, your Ada and your piece that is the backing fabric with the zipper. Put them together. Make sure that the zipper is open at least halfway. This is how you're going to flip the whole thing right side out again. Then I like to clip all around and you can just stitch with about a quarter inch seam allowance around the whole thing. Since you have a zipper, you don't need to leave an opening like I did for my ornament. All you have to do is stitch around in a straight line and then clip your corners of your fabric, make sure you clip your zipper ends, and flip 
the whole project right side out. And you will get something like this. Yay. So this is the same size as the Deck the Halls pillow. Let me show you. They are the same size. They look a little bit different because this one had less Ada to work with, so it was a little bit tighter fit. But here it is. This fabric is just fabric that I used um, from my stash. I think I got it at Joanne Fabrics. And I have a zipper. In both cases, I got the zippers from Zip It Zippers on Etsy. Uh, they have really good deals on bulk zippers, so if you're in the market for those, check that out. Yeah, so you can definitely make pillows. If you have a sewing machine, you can absolutely make pillows. You can definitely install a zipper. If you don't feel comfortable installing a zipper, there are a few other choices. You could do an envelope closure, you, which means that you'll be able to you know, it'll like overlap on the back and you can get the pillow out again that way. You can also do what I did for my small guy, which is now lost among these larger pillows. No, it's not. This guy, you can do a larger one like this and close up the, with a ladder stitch on the bottom. You can use polyfill, just the like fluffy stuff. That's what's in here. Or you can use a pillow form. There are a lot of different ways to achieve this look and it is really very simple. I think that putting these together probably took me about 30 minutes from start to finish. And that's including cutting the fabric, installing the zipper, and creating the pillow. Uh, make sure, of course, to press your piece a little bit. You know, you've been taking it in and out of your hoop or your Q-snap, something like that, and you're gonna have a little bit of lines there, which is fine. Um, just be sure to press it a tiny bit and you will have a really nice, crisp, finished piece. Take a look at this. Right? It's really exciting. And take a look at this. What a great thing. This would also make a really excellent gift. Um, yeah, someone would love to get this, right? You worked so hard stitching this and then you spent time turning it into a beautiful pillow. Amazing. You can make Christmas tree ornaments, you can make gifts for teachers, friends, neighbors, children, anyone. If you turn your project from one just beautiful piece into a pillow. That is really all I have for you about that. It's super easy. If you have any questions or comments for me, please make sure to leave a comment below. Um, I will be checking in on those and seeing if I can do anything to help. Be sure to, again, like this video and subscribe to this channel to continue seeing all of this great content. I know that, I know you love cross stitch as much as I do, so why else would you be here? <laughs> but uh, Sally is a great designer and she just keeps coming up with more and more wonderful things, so you could make more and more wonderful pillows, right? Just decorate your home in caterpillar. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.